Hi, welcome to Home Farm. Today we're going to tell you how we check the insulation of our house using the Fleur Thermal Imaging Camera. So for those of you that just know us as Kirsten and Miles who do product reviews on YouTube, we also um, do a blog where we talk about our sustainability journey and because of that we've kind of touched on uh, the fact that we installed a heat pump and a solar array when we first moved into this um, farmhouse. It's about a 200 year old um, farm, Victorian farmhouse and we're in the Welsh borders so it gets very chilly <laughs> and um, when we started to document that journey of how we installed a heat pump and solar array and just trying to be more sustainable uh, we started to do a lot of videos about that we found a lot of people were very interested in um, the heat pump and so we've got other videos which we can link up here. Um, but because of that it really has pushed us into thinking about the house in, as a whole mm. unit and just how for example how good our insulation is when we very first moved into the property um, I have always I think my grandparents instilled <laughs> in me an aversion to drafts um, my grandmother was always that woman who was sitting in her arm just saying no no dear close the door a, you're letting a draft in so I have inherited that so when we were looking and viewing properties um, it's just one of the things I do I'm looking aesthetically I'm looking at the house but I'm also walking past doors mm. and windows and I'm very casually, suspiciously kind of passing my hand across windows going, oh, it's so drafty. So when we moved into this house, the very, that was one of the very yeah. first things we did. We just DIY'd it ourselves, went down to our local hardware store. We bought all the um, new door seals, like rubber seals. I went a bit mad and I think Mars thought I was a bit crazy. I thought you were bonkers. I mean, <laughs> we, prior to that, we'd lived in a house with a gas boiler. This house had an oil boiler, so stuff used to get really warm. And, you know, I'm not embarrassed to admit that I actually didn't think much about insulation because, you know, the house was, was hot. The previous house. The previous house. And it was, it was just a 1930s kind of you know, modern house. So yeah. there wasn't an awful lot to go wrong with it. This being a farmhouse and being rural, you know, we've got a mm -hmm. lot more holes and gaps and, you know, things happening where there is a lot more uh, cold weather that yeah. can come into the house. And that means obviously a lot more of your heating that you're mm. paying to heat the rooms can go out of your house. For me, actually, it was the Essel's heat pump that was the, 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 the kind of transition moment with regards to the insulation because that Essel's heat pump just ran so much cooler. Mm -hmm. uh, so the smallest of drafts, you could feel them in the house and you could feel those rooms struggling. So I kind of then bought into what you do and now we've spent a lot of time just insulating areas, even silicon and keyholes just around the edges just to yeah. make sure that those uh, gusts of uh, breeze or wind or whatever, the, we're just keeping the cold out. So because this house was renovated prior to us moving in, so it was a recent renovation and kind of conversion, and um, the previous owners had done that. And some of the renovations they had done were better than others. Um, so that meant that they have basically put drywall up and, and sand in between the actual brick uh, out exterior of the farmhouse. And the, we were not 100% sure if the insulation, they said they in, had insulated the whole property, but we weren't really sure because we know that for sure the floors are not well mm. insulated at all. And we do have a lot of kind of cold yeah. air that comes up through the floorboards. So it's always been something that, you know, when you can't see what's going on in floors and walls and things, you know, that really becomes an issue mm -hmm. because you don't know whether it's worth spending money to rip something, open something and fix it. Um, or you just don't know whether to leave it. You, you yeah. know, it's, it's a real big question mark. And, you know, I think that that's the biggest thing that I struggle with with properties in general is I just don't, can't really get my head around the fact that we hide so much of the essential fundamental parts yeah. of our homes and make them so inaccessible. It blows my mind, for example, mm -hmm. that, you know, you put plumb in a bathroom and all those pipes are then sealed in walls. So, you know, when you get a leak, it's a nightmare. So for me, I've always been saying to my oh God, I would love to know yeah. what's happening in our walls and in <laughs> our floors and things. So that's really kind of what spurred that on to yeah. for us to look more at thermal imaging. So a big shout out and a big thank you to Octopus Energy for actually lending us this, this thermal imaging camera. It's something they want homeowners to pay a lot of attention to and that is to actually check what their insulation is like in their property and whether they're leaking any heat. So the thermal imaging camera actually works fantastically well from that perspective purely because you can actually see very quickly what's hot and what's cold. Mm. And you can actually see variations in temperature between different surfaces. So we put it to the test 
And the one thing I will say is that it's we pretty much experimented with this for a week, and there is a bit of a learning curve at, at the outset of it because you're initially just pointing at, at you know at a wall here, at a window there, and it's all kind of oh you know look at the colors and look at the, the actual temperatures. <laughs> Uh, but it's only after you start using it more properly that you actually start to realize that there is a learning curve because you can actually understand a little bit more where the actual leaks are happening. So working from within the house is actually a lot easier than from the outside. Right. So, you know, what the, the most important thing that you want to do is to make sure that you're doing this while it's actually cold outside. Yeah. So get your house up to the temperature that you normally run the house at. So in our case, that's around 21 degrees centigrade. And I waited for the temperature outside to drop to about three or four degrees. Hmm. Then you basically walk around, you point it at the walls, you point it at the ceilings, you point it at the floors. Windows. Uh, and, and the windows. I'll get into windows in a second. And, and you'll be actually be able to see if walls are actually insulated because you will actually see a difference in temperature between one wall and another. Thankfully, I will say that our walls were consistently the same temperature. So oh. that's a good sign. So there was a fair amount of, uh, of insulation that was done inside those walls. Hmm. The biggest problem that we've got are the corners of windows. Mm. So you made us, you know, in the early days, we grouted and sealed all of the, the window frames at the bottom, yeah. which has worked, but we're still getting quite a lot of cool ingress actually coming through those. And that typically happens in the corners of windows. Yeah. So when you actually take the thermal, thermal imaging camera and you point it at the, at the window, there, there is a couple of degrees difference between the inside of the room and the window, which is fine because they're double glazed but you see big blue spots that start to form in the corners, which is basically showing that air is trying to come inside the house from there. The other really interesting thing that I found is that we sealed the front door. So we actually are keeping a lot of the drafts out, but at the bottom where we couldn't quite seal it, you can actually, again, see, even though you can't feel the, the wind coming in because it still feels quite airtight, it's definitely cold coming through there. So, you know, in instances like that, if you've got a door maybe that you're not using frequently, maybe a towel or one of those sausage dog type yeah, uh, door stoppers, you definitely. can actually put it down there. And that, that, that does actually work because I did that as an experiment. I rolled the towel up and I put it down and it immediately increased the temperature around that door frame. Obviously, insulation has been a real hot topic um, yeah, last massive. year in 2021 because of heat pumps. And there was an awful lot of discussion in the media about insulation. And I think it's worth saying that not all insulation could, should cost an arm and a leg. Yeah. You know, yes, if you're going to completely re-insulate maybe, I don't know, your loft area or something or in your internal walls or external walls, mm -hmm maybe that can really run into a lot of money. But um, there are other things that you can do yourself which are much more affordable, which are much faster, mm -hmm. and literally just take an afternoon out of your weekend. You can do it together as a family or as a couple and just go around, You know, especially if you've got the kids involved running around with their hands saying, mm -hmm. yeah, mom, I can feel something here. It's, it's cold air coming in and do it together and be and make it like more of a fun thing and, and actually just seal your home. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that sounds quite basic, but I, I just don't think that really it's top of mind for us. And I think especially for this winter where we've had the energy crisis and uh, electricity tariffs mm -hmm. are going through the roof, gas is getting much more higher. We're all facing much higher bills. And I really think that it's really critical that people hold on to their heat. You're paying a lot of money for that heat. So make sure that you're holding on to it as much as you can. And for example, the door seals and things, you know, we ordered some of ours off Amazon. Mm. We went to our local hardware store for the ones that they actually did have. Um, and you were looking at kind of like three to five to six pounds for, yeah. you know, a strip or something like that. And it makes a massive difference. Um, even for example, we've got uh, some of the back doors mm -hmm. uh, where the underfloor yeah. heating, the previous owners didn't run the underfloor heating to the door. They left it like a meter away from the door, which is a bit crazy. But that means that the, the area in front of the door on the inside gets icy icy yeah. cold so for example just putting a doormat there a really nice thick doormat there starts to insulate that for example in the rugs we've got rugs in our living room and our tv mm -hmm. room our tv room is north facing and it gets really really yeah. cold the first thing i did when we, when we moved in was i ordered wool um underlay it was really easy i think i just ordered it from, from amazon it's a natural product it's just wool and it just comes in like a big roll and then you can just yeah. cut it for whatever shape or size you want and you put it under the rugs mm -hmm. and then again that insulates the, the the floors stops any drafts coming up mm -hmm. through the floorboards and helps to retain some heat in those yeah. rooms in terms of the more expensive fixes uh, thankfully the the double glazing that the previous owners had actually put in was actually quite good so even from the outside which i'll touch on in a minute everything seems to be functioning quite well the room that we're sitting in right now has got a lot of large windows uh, and he, the previous owners had actually DIY'd 
the, the bulk of those windows. Mm -hmm. And we replaced two of these windows, I think, last year. Yeah. And it's been remarkable to see how a properly double glazed window yeah. performs versus a DIY <laughs> botch job, shall we say. <laughs> it is worth looking window by window going through the house because you know you don't necessarily have to go out and rip all of them out because no. if there's certain windows that are actually doing a good job that's great but the ones that aren't performing are probably worth changing and i think that a lot of people's mindsets might change now because in the past energy was actually quite cheap so heating the house was quite yeah, was affordable. quite cheap yeah. and affordable but I would just go back to the point about mm. the windows is that, you know, also when you move into a new property, you know, getting, doing something like a thermal imaging exercise across a new mm -hmm. property not only gives you immediately information on the walls and things that you can't see, but it also tells you about which windows are more sheltered. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, you don't necessarily need to go in and, and rip out every single window in a property and replace it with double glazing. Even if you did, for example, like you have just the thin kind of wood mm. windows, maybe the Victorian Georgian kind of windows and they are a bit leaky. But if you've got maybe, for example, windows on uh, the side of the property and, you know, that is quite sheltered and it's, you know, for example, south facing, so it gets quite a lot of sun, it's not getting so much yeah. weather, you might not need to change that immediately. That could be something that could be delayed and you could then prioritize the windows that are the most mm -hmm. leaky and the doors that are getting the most uh, drafts coming in and out. That's actually a great point because a solar gain actually plays a huge role. So again, I experimented with this camera doing it on different days so i actually went out one afternoon at four o'clock in the afternoon after the the sun and it was a sunny day and it was remarkable to see how the bricks and the windows actually did retain a lot of the heat on the north end of the house obviously not as much on the south end of the house definitely a lot more so so again this gives you some insights with regards to which portions of your house actually get heat and actually are able to retain that exterior heat because obviously if the exterior is warm it's going to help with the stuff that's actually happening inside. The other tip that I can definitely give is rooms that are unused that are actually quite cold keep those doors closed uh, purely because that that cold air isn't actually going to go into the house especially if you're not heating those rooms yeah. you're just basically keeping the air the cold air on the other side of that of that door and the other thing that I noticed was even that there was a two to three degree difference between the window and the actual interior of that room when you actually pulled the blind down and you left it for an hour it was remarkable to see how the blind and the actual wall were the same temperatures so, you know it was whatever little heat was trying to get out was actually now being kept inside that room the other useful thing that you could probably use the camera for is you alluded to not knowing what's behind the walls if you've got hot water pipes that are running through you can actually put the thermal camera up against that and you will be able to see hotter spots than others which should give you an idea more or less where those hot pipes are running. While scanning the house from the outside was useful, I did think it was a lot more beneficial to do an inside scan. But if you do have a look at the house from the outside, make sure that when you're actually pointing it at the house, don't get the sky in, because you will get a huge disparity in color and it might throw you a little bit. So the sky is gonna be really cold and the house is gonna be really warm. Try and just keep a position on the house. All in all, I found this the thermal imaging camera to be very, very useful. It's given us more work to do during the course of the summer now to make sure that we insulate just one or two of the windows that uh, were a little bit more suspect than others. But I've got to say as an exercise, if you are concerned about your insulation, this is actually something that will allow you to identify areas of concern very quickly. I think it's really worth doing if you're looking at moving into a new property, if you're thinking about doing some renovation work, mm -hmm. or that you've had some renovation work done recently and you're just not 100% sure on how good the quality was, then I think that the, this, these are really good mm -hmm. exercises. It gives you really solid information very quickly without having to really start to mm -hmm. knock into things. Um, so I think that that's just fantastic. So the device that we uh, have tried out is the Fleur One. Um, they do retail at a quite an expensive price, they're quite a heavy investment. Um, but if you are, for example, doing a self-build and you're you know, building a property from scratch and you can budget that in, um, then yeah. that's great. I'm sure they'll hop, try and rehold their resale values. If you need to sell it six months from now, I'm sure that they, they would get a decent price from them because they're very, very um, good, high-tech mm -hmm. pieces of kit. Um, but if you're an Octopus customer and you want to just uh, borrow one, uh, apparently you can actually yeah. contact Octopus and ask them to send you one and they will send you one on loan based on availability. So there is an iOS version and an Android version. So if you're an Octopus customer, get in touch with them and I'm sure that they can send you one. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and we hope to see you on our next video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.